You don't want to know P.S. Outpost. 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 Okay. Because we were moving alone, we didn't have division. We didn't have many people in each battle. Okay. So we had a, about a battalion, which is about a thousand people. And we were going to attack the Japs in Michinoc at 7 o'clock in the morning. So I crawled out at night and I dug a little well, so I could dig and still hide with my BAR. I took 250 rounds of ammo, a belt, that's how I carry them. I had eight magazines, which is a, how many, 20 in a magazine. Eight times 20 is? 160. Okay. Something like that. So. The VAR has three gas ports, and they get dirty. And each one is bigger than the other one. And they're underneath the bipod. You got to take the bipod off and turn the gas port to the next one to make it shoot again. It quits shooting because it gets so full of the gas. Don't work the bolt. Oh, okay. The, Gas comes from the bullet when you shoot it, it runs through a little hole and makes the action work. So, I had just received, I, I had written to my dad I wanted a revolver that held 45 APC sh shells. I didn't want to. I could have got an uh, officer's 1911, regular semi-automatic, but I didn't want anybody to ever take my gun because it looked like that. Hmm. So I got the okay from the provost marshal to get it, and I wanted my grandfather, my dad, to have, I talked to him, I wrote to my dad, and he gave this letter to my grandpa. I wanted it converted to 45 APC, a revolver, and they take half moon clips. Same with whole six rounds. So I received that gun three or four days earlier in the holster. So I just put it on and I had it on. So the Japs attacked us across this big field and come in, you know, Benzai, you know, and they were the Imperial Marines and their heads were about the size of water bottles. So I'm fixing my gas port after shooting and shooting and shooting. And a Jap big Japanese Imperial Marine was up there gonna bayonet me. So I just reached down and pulled the trigger on the revolver and blew half his head off. He fell in the hole on top of me and his bayonet did hit my hand, one hand or the other, I forgot which one. It just didn't do nothing. But the Japs were all over. And I could hear him talking, bam, dry, bam, dry, you know. Running right past this guy laying on top of me in a foxhole. And the Japs overrun our position, so my men moved back. Now this was, you know, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. So I lay under there, that Jap, dead man, while the other Japs were attacking. And they stayed there. And I could hear him walking around talking. They didn't move this dead Jap, or I'd have been dead. And so the next morning we attacked again. My boys did. We pushed them back, and I got out of the hole. So I stayed in there all that one day from the morning and through the night, and the next day I got out. Next morning. Wow. I'm about talking about scared shit, kid. No kidding. <laughs> That's a, just the first story. That's insane. That's, wow. And that was six guys, three M1s, two Cook, Thompsons, and me with my BAR. We were looking for the Japs. So we could work on the roads that they might be getting away on. 
so we're walking it. Oh, he went through the jungle. You've seen very much. And so I heard a noise. I stopped. I went out and looked down there, and there was a, like a, a road, you know, like two trails from a uh, horse drawn donkey thing or something. And here comes a whole platoon of Japanese, 40 something. So I, before they got there, on this dirt trail was a little hill. So I set the Thompsons, one, uh, one on each side, in the back of where we were going to start shooting. And I took the M1s, and I put them further, and I got down in the road in the front, just as they come over the hill. And I laid down flat on the road so I couldn't get shot as easily. With my BAR, you know, and 120 rounds, I think I could. So when the Japs came into sight, Thompson started shooting. Well, they couldn't run backwards because the Thompsons were there. And then they stood in the middle a little bit like this, trying to figure which way to go, and the M1s let loose. And then they decided to run down the road towards me, and I let loose. And in the space of five minutes, we killed 40 cats. Jeez. And I went back and told them what we did. That we had found about a platoon of Japanese, and I gave them the location. So next morning, I sent a company out to look for the Japs, and they found a couple of platoons there, guarding some supplies and wiped them out. So that's what I did. That was my job. Wow. That's really well, and I knew direction. When I went out on a patrol with, I got to pick anybody I want. We didn't wore the stripes over there. Of course, I was still the PSC because I kept getting busted. Hmm. So I could pick anybody. I could pick, pick the first sergeant or a staff sergeant or any, anybody I knew was capable. And we'd take a patrol out, five or six men, and I'd carry the BAR. And we would, a rice paddy, it's sunk about two foot, and there's a little bound on top of it. And that we would walk across that if we had to, to get to a certain place. And that's where you were logically shot at by a sniper because you was out in the open, not in the trees. Mm. So when I would go there, I would have my finger on my trigger to BAR, and if a sniper fired at it, and they almost always did, I would shoot at the sound, at a 70% kill at the sound at up to 100 yards. And all I did was spray the tree where, or whatever direction. I didn't even, you know, I wouldn't even see the direction. I'd be hitting the dirt just like the rest of them. Right. And I hit the sniper. And they thought that was pretty great, so they didn't mind going out with me on a <laughs> patrol or where it was going. Okay, another story. We never took our guns out at night when we went on a patrol. We would be informed by the Naga Hill tribes that there was a Japanese CP a certain place. And they would tell us where it was and tell me. Oh, we had an interpreter there and he determined it. And so I'd fit half a dozen men, no, hang no rifles, only knives and hand grenades. So we'd go out to the place that usually took us four or five hours to get there, you know, like one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, we'd get there. And the officers, there would be tents all around. And the officers would be sitting there at a coffee table drinking sake with a Coleman lantern. So quietly, we always took a, had a Gurkha go with us to show us where it was. And on the way, all of a sudden he put his hand up and we'd all stop and lay down. And then a little while he'd come back, a little while, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, he'd come back and he said, okay. So we'd go along and there'd be a dead Jap laying there with his leg cut off besides other things. <laughs> and we'd just walk past him and keep going. And when you finally get to the place and the Gurkha would tell us like that. So we would go around the tents. Mm -hmm. And we get spaced pretty evenly, and we'd all pull our grenades at the same time and throw them all there at, in the middle of the 
tents and the officers and run like hell. And we'd run all the way. I mean, I crossed the stream, same, well, everybody was with me. The half a dozen guys would cross that same stream. One night we counted 88 times. Just getting away from the Japs. I mean, because they'd come out and multi-Japanese multi trying to find us and kill us. Right. But we always found a different way back. And, and we never lost a man in any of those things. Never? Never. Never, never had anybody even shoot at us because they couldn't find us. <laughs> That's incredible. Other thing. First time I saw the Burma Road. Still would allow us. We had a 4.2 border. And I had taught, been taught about 4.2 border. Everybody wasn't taught about everything. I had an IRTC basic. So I learned all the weapons of infantry. Oh. So my basic took 13 weeks instead of nine. So here comes tanks down the Burma Road, and we're about, I don't know, I could see them, but we're about a thousand yards. So we sit up the 4.2 border, and I'd fire three rounds before the first one hit the ground, but it put big holes in the Burma Road, and still will stop me. So we said, we're still going to get those tanks, because they drive right up to the hill, and shoot at us with their whiz bang gun. I don't know what it was, 77 millimeter or something. You know, bang, bang. We couldn't, what are you going to do with a tank? Shoot the M1 or a machine gun at it? It did it with a ding ding ding, that's all it does. Right. So we sent two guys out at night, different guys, different times. I only went once. We never used these little blocks of explosive they have now. We use primer cord, which looks just like a fuse, except it's a different color. Mm. And we'd put a fuse, a detonator cap and a fuse on it. And we'd go out there in our tennies in the dark when the tanks were going down, and we'd run up there, climb up on the tank, and wrap this around a turret and light it and then run. Blew the turret off. And <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we did that four or five times, and then they were more astute. They had the lid open, and we're looking around. <laughs> but we got three or four times. Jeez. End of the story. That's brave.